You're still watching Plus Politics on Plus TV Africa. Now, a member of the House of Representatives representing Balanga Biliri constituency in Gombe State, Victor Danzaria, has reportedly appointed 36 assistants. Explaining the reason behind his action, Dan Zaria said he is doing so to empower the youths and put food on their table. He said that the aides were appointed through a careful selection process, adding he will be footing 80% of their salaries while the National Assembly will handle the remaining. Joining me to talk about this, or rather still with me in the studio from the last session, is uh, Babashola Adegui, political analyst. Thank you for staying uh, with us. Yeah. Uh, is this a, some say it's a bad and a good thing. What do you say? It's a bad thing. It's a bad thing because, number one, I don't believe in empowerment. What I believe is investment, invest in people. When we talk about investing in people, we are talking about helping them to discover themselves. But empowering them, giving them a political position that, that has no function. Because I still wonder what a lawmaker needs a 36, uh, 36 aids for. Maybe one will be helping to uh, tie the sole, uh, the lace of his shoe, one of the wristwatch. Because I still don't get it. I made mention of it, this thing about a uh, few months ago when uh, uh, another, was it a governor that also appointed about 100 special aids? And I, I remember. Think, uh, Cross River. Cross River uh, so. appointed about 1,000, quite born. You know, all these things for me, it doesn't make sense. That should be a law. So you don't see it as empowered? I don't see it as what empowerment. What is it then? For me, I just see it as a, a portfolio, a, a, a position and office without portfolio. It's an office without portfolio whereby they can go out, do you know that I'm also a special advisor or the, a, a special assistant to a lawmaker that has no portfolio? What portfolio is it going to give them? Let's look at it, 36. It's uh, maybe one for women, one for boys, one for girls, one for... So it doesn't make sense for me. That should be law guiding the number of aides. A lawmaker or political uh, uh, appointees or the elected uh, ones should have. Okay, but he did say, um, he, he, okay, let me start with the fact that he is very proud of what he has done. He went as far to say that um, no other lawmaker has been able to do what he has done, employing this amount of people. But there's something tricky. He says 80% of the payment will be done by him. The National Assembly will take care of the, the rest. What does this mean to you? Like, how do we do that? Is it the House of Assembly, the, I mean, the National Assembly that is encouraging such, or it is more, what, what explanation do you have for this? Was it not last week that we are make, we, we were talking about the Coast River governor that uh, uh, went back to school or whatever? Yeah. You know, I made mention of people capitalizing on loopholes, and that is exactly what is happening. There is a loophole in the either in the National Assembly or in our Nigerian Constitution or whatever, whereby he had he had been able to identify and tried it. If the National Assembly had stopped him from appointing 36, it will not be mentioned that the National Assembly will pay 20 percent. So what that means is this: it means that the recurrent expenditure of the National Assembly has increased by 20%, by 20% for 36 people, which of course I doubt that he will pay 80%. But how would he, what he earns, is it enough to, well, I mean, is it enough to truly keep these people? Let me tell you, what the, what, 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 what the pay special heads like for lawmakers is not something to be. <laughs> to write to me about. So what happens when his tenure is over? That's the hand. That's the hand. What becomes of these young men? And they, find, they go and find something else to do. Will they still be employable? What, what skills would they bring to they the They are table? already experienced politicians. They can decide to go into politics. That's exactly, that's exactly the point. They can decide to go into politics. With bigger amount that is going to pay them, ask, go and find out if you are able to know these statistics. Find out is what is going to pay them. I'm very sure maybe each of them will collect 30,000 euro or 20,000 euro. Go and find out. It's not, don't, don't, don't think that it's going to be 
uh, maybe it's an, a, a huge amount that will pay them at the end of the month. But wouldn't you say it's a good thing, considering the fact that we have gross unemployment in this country, people are on the street, we have corporate beggars all over the street of Abuja, and just this morning, a colleague of mine was robbed on his way to work, beating up, and all his monies my was taken from his account. My own point is very simple. We, don't, we are not interested in empowerment. We are interested in investment in these people. When you talk about investment, what do you mean? When we talk about empowerment, it's just to keep them busy. Once the tap that is running is no longer running, everybody will go and look for something else. But when you invest in them, it means that you help them to discover themselves. You are not giving them the money. You are not giving them the money per se, but whereby it, an, an, an engineer, a guy who is an engineer, we know that, oh, this man is supporting me. You get that even after a period of time, I should be able to stand on my own. That is investment. That is the way the economy will grow. The guy you are invested into, for example, you are giving it, a, a, a one hectares of land to farm. And you are telling me for everything that is coming out of that farm, I, I'm going to take. Uh, you are taking 80 percent. Just give me 20 percent. That guy has seen something that he will make you solve for the rest of his life. Except he's not a wise person. But whereby you have empowered someone by giving that person a political position, it means that the day you are not coming back to the national assembly, they are also out of job. So let me, let me bring in one perspective, uh, somebody who should know what youth empowerment is. He's a president of the African uh, Development Bank. Just recently on the um, sidelines of the World Bank International Monetary Fund Anno Dina in Washington, um, he's quoted as saying that he does not believe in youth empowerment. Uh, he, he defines it as um, it is meaningless when someone is empowered or trained yet has no access to finance. What is your definition um, of uh, youth empowerment, and do you believe in it? Well, I, I didn't know the, the uh, that's the president. Of, yeah. yeah, I didn't know he said some such a thing. So, what he's saying there is also investment. Support these people. Okay, you have trained him. He has gone to school. He has gone to school. Help him. Or if you can, even the first thing is sending that person to school. That is first investment. The second investment is to secure that person a job if you can. Then if you can't, tell that person to look for something else he can do. That, okay, once I've given you this 30,000 euros, that is what you will use. I'm not giving you any other thing. That is what you use for whatever business you want to do. That is investment. If you are a teacher, well, I will help you to get a job, but can you start uh, uh, doing something within the community, teaching children, and I don't mind giving you maybe 10,000 to support you by the end of that investment. But when you are talking of empowerment, you have gone to, okay, I'm not interested in what you do. I'm not interested in your my profession. I'm only interested in what I want to give you, whereby the noise can go around. I can buy 30 motorcycles. Whether you can ride motorcycle or not, it is not my business. I have empowered you. Everybody find his way. And I'm not interested in how you have been able to, uh, to make use of what has been given to you. But someone you have invested into, you will have to find out how it has been doing with that business. That is exactly what uh, uh, the president of AFDB actually made mention of there. The, the thing about this is um, we have politicians over time doing this repeatedly. This is not the first time it is happening. You made mention of Ayadi and some other um, uh, governors and you know lawmakers that have come out to say they want to empower people. I know of for a certain, certain states that empower people that have no requisite skills. Some of them are aides with no portfolio. When will this end? How will it end? Well, when it will end is when the National Assembly wakes up from slumber by looking at the loopholes being capitalized on by elected politicians and political appointees and work on those loopholes so that it will also be stringent for them and also to reduce unnecessary increase of recurrent expenditure. 
in the National Assembly. If there is no law of policy guiding a lot of things, we are going to continue increasing what goes out, and it, it, it will affect the economy of the country badly. What about these young people themselves who, I mean, common sense would say that this is a short-term thing. These people are in office for a period of time. What, what should they be thinking? What should be um, their options? If, I mean, there is unemployment, they have to eat, they have to survive. Immediately what they're thinking is how they can do this. But what should they be thinking long term? What responsibility do they have in this scenario? Unfortunately, only very few people think of long term. Majority think of the short term. They only know what they are enjoying now. There is no plan for tomorrow. It's only very few of them who are wise that will know that this man that has appointed me, that is giving a meager amount, by the end of the month, he will leave this office for a period of time. Let me think of what I can do with what he's giving me, so that after he leaves office, I'll be able to continue living my life. It's just like if, uh, uh, you working in a company. Everybody collects salary at the end of the month. Some know that there is a possibility for this company to fold up, and they start thinking ahead. Why some believe that, oh, let us continue to enjoy the national cake without thinking that there will be a day that all this thing will stop. So it's all about individual. But like I said earlier, majority don't think of long term. It is what they are enjoying now that is of their interest. So when the time comes, they will tell you when we get to the bridge, we know how to cause it. What does that mean for it the means country, that. the future of this country? If the young people are, um, from your description, not thinking in the long term. The future of this country, on the respect of not thinking in the long term, is what the young people have learned from this, our so-called political leaders. Let me tell you, when we are talking of uh, long term, a, polit a, a political leader should think of how this Nigeria, that we claim to be our home country, and we claim uh, not to have any other way to go, think of how this country will be self-sufficient. But what every most of the political leaders are thinking of is what they can benefit now. And that's why they kill themselves. That's why they uh, send themselves to uh, take themselves to court. That's why you see a lot of uh, bloodshed whenever it's time for an election. That's why they start blackmailing. Because most of them are only after the benefit, the personal gain they have. They will, be, they will derive from uh, uh, the position they are running for and not the interest of Nigeria. And not the interest of Nigeria. So the young people actually learned that from them. For example, I remember there was um, a lawmaker who had um, one high C stuff telling people that he's training them, he's training them. So immediately she lost. She's closed down the high tea. So the training stopped. In other words, immediately she lost. Two things happened. She, as I'm talking to you, she cannot fend for herself again. She did not plan for it. So the people she was training during that period, everybody, some of them can work with it, some of them cannot work with it, because it was, it, it was hoping for political purposes. So we need a change of orientation and leadership exactly. style. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts. It's a pleasure to be here again. All right. And we will be going on a short break. We're not done. Yeah. We'll be going on a short break for a plus package. And when we return, I will give you my take. The Akiti State Sensitization Committee for a Credible Local Government Election on December 7th has promised to change the narrative of compromise associated with local government polls by ensuring rancor free and transparent council polls devoid of manipulations. The State Commissioner for Information, Muiwa Olumilua, stated this in Ado Ikiti while local government sensitization committee was kicking off the tour for the December 7th election across all the 177 political wards in the state. To ensure that the coming election is free and fair and devoid of violence and rancor. 
to ensure that every candidate of all the parties contesting the election is given a level playing field and their constitutional right to be freely voted for, just as the electorate has the freedom and constitutional right to vote for whosoever they wish to vote for. His Excellency Governor John Kao Defiami, being the father of all, looks forward to a free and fair election and is committed to having democracy prevail. This election should be adjudged as an exercise of democracy at its very best. Youth empowerment is the phrase employed by politicians, in my opinion, to keep many young people in bondage. They are discardable foot soldiers, useful for a time only. What happens afterwards is what in part is responsible for the insecurity and increasing unemployability of many young folks in Nigeria today. We must be better. Handouts are not the solution. What every responsible leadership should focus on is creating empowerment schemes that lays emphasis on creating greater and lasting community change that relies on a holistic development of the young individual's capacity. Thank you for watching. Plus Politics returns same time tomorrow to join us again. Until then, bye for now.